I call the meeting to order of, of Deerfield ZBA, six o'clock, April 8th. Roll call, please. Adam Sokolowski. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chair. I'm here, uh, Mr. Decker. Present and accounted for. Uh, John. No, John. David? Here. Alex? Here. And Jen? Here. We're going to um, review the uh, minutes from the previous meeting. Has everyone had a chance to look the minutes over? Yeah, uh, Bernie, it looks like John. Oh, is I'm here. sorry. There's there's John. Guys, I was having a hard time joining in. Okay. We're going to um, review the uh, minutes, previous meetings. Did everyone have a chance to look? Yes. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Decker. In the, these meetings, are all been recorded on YouTube and what have you. I think it would be prudent if we uh, had a CD-ROM or whatever you want to call it made of, of each one of our meetings and they, they be attached to the minutes just for continuity so that you know everything is there and recorded before some reason that you're not able to get it 10 years from now. Cost about five bucks. It used to you used to be able to get a copy of a meeting disc for five bucks when it was on the uh, cable. So uh, I just discussion. think discussion. Discussion. Chair John. You know I think we should preserve them in one way, shape, or form. I don't think we necessarily need to attach them to the minutes. But if uh, if they're being recorded and um, maybe Jennifer knows that as long as they're preserved, uh, I don't think they need to be put on a CD-ROM and attached. Uh, they could be up in the cloud preserved. Yes, but they are. They are preserved. They're backed up and preserved on the cloud. I still think we should be attached because who knows what the cloud is going to look like 10 years from now. It could be a cumulus or a stratosphere. I'm not exactly sure what it's going to look like, but let's see. If it got serious, <laughs> um, any more discussion? We, uh, I think, we need to take a vote on what we want to ask for this to. Uh, Mr. Mr. Decker, Decker, we're going to make a motion on that. Yep. Yes. Okay. Do I have a second? Mr. Decker, I'll give you a second. Okay, so we're gonna take a, a vote to see if we put a, is it CD-ROM, is that what we said? I think that's what it is, it's a floppy disk. Okay. We don't have floppy disks any, I mean, we don't use floppy disks anymore. We could we could put it on a-, a Put it on a, right, I don't care. You're aging yourself, Mr. Tech, and we say floppy disks. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've got some upstairs if you want to see them. Okay. So that's where we're going to take a vote and see if we want to put that on a uh, thumb drive or some kind of hard drive for in perpetuity, I guess is what we call it. Yeah. Uh, you know, Kevin, uh, question, comment? Mr. Chair. Hi, John. Uh, Jennifer uh, and Carolyn, uh, do you feel confident in the way they're preserved that they're not going to disappear or be altered? Or um, you know, I, I don't, I don't. C CD ROMs are almost going the way of floppy disks. Uh, I know my computer doesn't even have uh, an input for CD ROMs. <laughs> So, Neither does mine. Oops, yeah. Sorry. So, 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 I mean, I, you know, it's, I think it's, uh, I, I, I think the technology 
has progressed beyond floppy disk CD-ROMs and it's now on the cloud. I, I, I'm, I feel very secure with it being in the cloud. But we also have a external hard drive that we have transferred a lot of the meetings onto when we were using Intermedia, the other account. But all of these meetings are put onto YouTube as well as transferred onto our website. So if we transfer everything from our website, we upgrade, that would be one of the things that's transferred with it. Mike, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Zacker. Are these going to be kept in perpetuity? They have, yeah. Yes. Well, that's that's the question. I want to make sure they're kept in perpetuity. So we want to go back and see that I said such and such on such and such day. We can look it up and see what I said. I have a question, Mr. Chair Adam here. Yes. I understand what, what Mr. Decker is asking for, and I agree with it. I believe it already exists. I guess the question becomes for the public records law people, should the minutes indicate that the full meeting is available and the, meeting, the minutes may be an abbreviation or a summary? And if the, meeting, if the minutes note that, then you know where or how the town hall or how, whoever stores this, then it's referenced back. I mean, I don't think we need to fill file cabinets with minutes and then paper clipping disks to them or, or hard drives or, or, or what have you. But I think I, I understand what Mr. Decker is trying to accomplish it. It just might be a different way of accomplishing it. Further comments? I really don't foresee FCAT destroying what they have on YouTube and YouTube doesn't go away unless you have a certain amount of capacity for memory storage. And at that point you can look at to maybe saving things, but if it's in the cloud as Carolyn indicated and you have a copy of it on FCAT, um, I don't see why wasting the money on another storage piece unless you're backing up all the data in one area annually for all the committees that are um, saved. Okay, that's a question I have. What are the other committees doing? Jen? Everything is everything is done the same way. Everything's recorded and minutes are taken. So it's kind of overkill at this point. We have, every, you know, the minutes are stored. The it's YouTube video is stored. FCAT has it on their site as well as my YouTube channel for, well, it's our Deerfields, <laughs> call it mine, um, uh, YouTube channel as, as well as posting it on the website. So there's multiple locations. I mean, that's what takes every morning a whole lot of time for me unless Alex has prepared it ahead of time to download it and upload it and save everything. So. We comply, we comply with everything that is necessary for um, Freedom of Information Act. Everything is, is, is backed up and, and stored. I Putting it on disks in, the, in a, some filing cabinet isn't going to work because we don't have space already. I so quarter, it's not going to happen. Quarterly up, uh, update that uh, Northeast IT does, and I do that for them. And that storage is not even kept in town hall. It's kept off site. So literally I hook it up, get all the information and it's taken to a different location. So, you know, I, I think it'd be a real, it'd be an error for this board to create a whole different process to store and record minutes and videos than what everyone else is doing in the town. I think it's a waste of time Effort and effort from for our employees. Um, I feel very comfortable that what's being done now is adequate, and uh, I, I would suggest this motion not be uh, not be approved. Uh, Adam, I have a question. Alex, does it note on the minutes that the full meeting is available for review? Um. Not explicitly, but I can add it in. Um, well, why don't, why don't we make a motion to amend the minutes to uh, to 
let me make I'll, 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 I can't make a motion because there's a motion on the floor, but I'd make a motion after this one is decided to amend the minutes to uh, include reference sites where they where the where the full board uh, meetings can be seen. Whether it's the YouTube link or whatever other link we might have. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Mr. Decker. I'll withdraw, I'll withdraw my motion in favor of Mr. Staberski's motion. And as long as it, there, it's part of the minutes and it gives them the site, et cetera, where somebody can, can look up and find that stuff five years from now. So, okay, then motion's withdrawn. As long, you have to withdraw your second, Bernie. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I was just going to make a comment that um, I've, I've heard this story before about not being lost. And I can tell from my own experience, they guaranteed us it wasn't going to be lost, and it was lost. I know what Mr. Decker is talking about, but um, if everyone else is comfortable. I, uh, I will go along with that. Uh, I withdraw my second. So then I, I will move that before we have that we move to amend the minutes to include reference links to uh, where the public would be able to find recorded uh, copy of the meeting. Adam Sokolowski, I'll second that. Second it, okay. Please remember to give your name when we speak so we uh, can get the scribe to write down the names. Thank you. John okay. Made the most. Bernie, I have a question. Mr. Chess. Yes. Uh, it's yes. David Potter. Um, does this ref, uh, refer only to the pandemic era when we are remote, or are we also referring to minutes going back to FCAT recordings and referencing uh, that in the minutes going? But that seems to be going back indefinitely. So is it just the pandemic? Good question. Comments? I. Uh, I would say that we can only amend minutes that we haven't approved. So I know we have a couple pending um, minutes that haven't been approved. So it would be from this point forward, but we are always recorded um, in the town hall when we're over there, even if it doesn't make it on TV or, or whatever work, these meetings have always been recorded in one way or the other. Okay. So should the motion be restated to be specific to unapproved minutes and moving forward? You say from here, uh, uh, so I'd amend, I'd amend my original motion for all unapproved minutes and for minutes from here on in that a reference be, appear in the minutes to where the public can, how they can locate and view a live, the, the live feed of the meeting. Okay, so we Adam Sokolowski second the amendment. Okay, so we, we're clear what we're doing. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Decker. Question. Uh, we have not approved the, the minutes from last month yet, so we will hold those tonight until we get the right reference to attach to it, correct? Correct. Okay, okay so we have a second. So this is going to be on John's motion. So we have that. Uh, we did, that, Adam. Didn't Adam second it? Adam seconded it, but we were clear what we're, is everyone clear about what we're voting on? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Adam. Yes, Adam, yes. Um, I vote yes. Robert Decker? Yes. John? Yes. And David? David Potter, yes. Yes, thank you. So it carries five to zero that we're going to uh, go along with John's uh, motion. Any other comments? Okay. Let me get back on track here. Uh, review mail. I don't have any mail to review. Does anyone have anything that I'd like to bring up? 
I don't, I don't have any mail, but I have a question. Uh, Mr. Decker, go ahead. Was there not a hearing a week or so ago in land court and what happened in land court? Does anybody know? It was scheduled for March 26th and I don't know if anybody's received an email regarding that. I would assume Bernie would have or the town. I have not received any emails. I haven't received anything either. So that's my question as to whether or not there was any uh, decisions that were made at that point. I normally, assume normally at these kinds of hearings, judges take uh, the decisions under advisement, write an opinion, and then it's published. It's rare that they give rulings from the bench. So I'm sure they're waiting for something. I'm just curious. Okay. And we had we had a long executive session uh, last month and what have you. And everything that happened in the executive session made it to the newspaper a day or so later. I just wonder what why we haven't heard anything else after they went to court. <laughs> Any other comments? Okay. <coughs> can, can everyone hear me? Okay. Yeah. Continuation of public hearing of the application submitted by Dale Whitney for a special permit to change the use of 250 Greenfield Road to a multi dealer antique and collectible store. Miss Whitney, are you here? Yes, I am. This is Dale. Yes, thank you. Uh, comments? Well, I think I think we ended our public hearing or, sus or uh, suspended it um, because we wanted uh, Ms. Whitney to review the six factors that we have to uh, decide upon or, or evaluate in order to uh, vote for or against a special permit. I know I received a document that that she had sent to the town uh, with an outline of, of what those are. And maybe I would ask uh, Ms. Whitney at this point to review those points a little bit. I mean, it's, we I know we have it in writing, but it'd be good to hear from you. Okay. Um, I don't have it word for word in front of me, um, but the social economic or community okay, needs. Okay, hold, hold on a second. This is on reference to 5300 and it's number, this isn't the first 21. one. Number, number 21. Okay. Correct. Thank you. And I might, I might be able to pull that up. It? Yes, would you please? Yeah. So 21, social economic community needs which are served by the proposal. We will be providing a safe, clean environment to Franklin, Hampshire County residents to buy, sell, and work in the area. Okay, questions or comments on that? Okay. Uh, Ms. Whitney, yeah. is in terms of- John, John, remember, please, thank you. Yep. Name, so we get this for Adam, I mean for Alex. Uh, John Staberski asking Ms. Whitney a question on that particular criteria. Could you elaborate a little bit more about that? Is there anything more that uh, that uh, the, the business is offering, or uh, or to explain it a little bit more for for what kind of community needs? To, does I mean I would think that we're kind of you're kind of in a antique area, a district, and and it's enhancing that, drawing residents to the uh, or or uh, shoppers to that area? I, I don't know. I, I, I some of these some of these questions, this is Dale Whitney. Um, some of these questions I felt repeated themselves because a lot of the information is spelled out separately in one of the different, uh, some of the different areas in which um, we're in the, we're in the know. So for instance, allowing um, people in Franklin in Hampshire County to be able to sell wares, which would give um, a very wide range of people for income uh, 
which is which which is huge in our in our area right now, um, where they don't have to go out and and rent a space of their own in entirety, able to join a group to um, share in an existing um, business where they can just make money on um, their items. Um, community then then that goes under community needs. Um, social economics is we also help with people who are um, not only handicapped, but in distress, for instance, homeless people and um, people who are um, like wounded warriors and so on and so forth. We're going to be helping them out because of a small nonprofit area that's going to be in the back. Um, so as far as, so, and I, I, maybe I'm not 100% sure what you're looking for other social economic um, needs that are being met. No, I, I, I'm comfortable with your answer. Thank you. Ms. Okay. Johnson, Thank you. you again. All right. 22, traffic flow and safety, including parking and loading. Um, I spoke to the chief of police and he had told me that I needed to go to the planning board and discuss it with them. And I said, I already did. And he wanted to know what their response was. And he says, well, as long as there is egress and uh, proper egress and um, entrance, then that shouldn't be an issue. And we already had the parking done by um, the professional company that sent you the, the planning board, the report. And you, Jen, you have that still, right? Any questions on that or you're muted, Jen? <laughs> um, okay. I don't have it with me tonight, but there wasn't any concern with the planning board when it came to traffic. Okay, questions by the board. Anyone have any questions? Uh, Adam. Or comments? Comments? Adam? Bernie, can I be yeah, Go ahead, Adam. Um, well, there's no breakdown lanes there, and I just didn't know what she recommended for traffic flow. I mean, Douglas Galleries and that area is probably the hottest spot on 5 and 10 for crashes, rear-ending crashes, people going to the auction. So I just didn't know one, what the planning board reasons were not to ask for a traffic study or any information on traffic count and what the hours of operation would be if there'd be any improvements with lighting um, or turning lanes or moving that property back. If there was any discussion with Mass DOT, any safety recommendations from, from a traffic engineer at all. Um, I just, you know, you know if there was any, anything like that that has been, that you know, that we normally put through and request on anything on five and 10. Um, I mean, the, the building at once or one time was used heavily, I guess, before, before my time, but, you know, in the last 20 years, it's just been a small office in and out. And the most cars I've seen there has maybe been six or seven at one time. So I just didn't know what type of crowd this uh, type of event, these type of uh, event sales were going to bring. Um, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Ms. Whitney. Oh, Jennifer had her hand raised. Do you want to answer before I do? Go ahead. Um, darn it, now I lost my train of thought. Um, first of all, we're open from 10 in the morning to 5.30 in the afternoon. And under normal circumstances, we don't have a mass grouping of people uh, at one time. It's always a fluctuation of people coming and going. Um, so I think that was one of the things that when we spoke to the planning board was a uh, positive that we're not going to be open. Okay, it's 12 o'clock. You've got one hour to get here, do your things and then leave again. It's we're open from 10 in the morning to 530 in the afternoon. So it's a come and go type of um, the same as as Yankee Candle or um, or Cumberland Farms would be. Um, with Douglas Auctions, you've got a bunch of people that are there at six o'clock in the evening and it ends at eight o'clock. So you have a mass entering and a mass exiting at the same time. It is not like that. Okay. I thought when you first presented to us, you were talking about having some outdoor events. We, and we do, we will, but it's yeah, still going to be. 
it's they still going to be the same situation. Uh, it's going to be it, it, it's not going to be OK at, you know, one o'clock. It's open until until two. It's we're still going to be open from 10 to 530. And the events are going to be held in the back section where, OK, today we are are um, collecting funds and our our goal for um, June of 2021 is going to be we are collecting for the homeless people. So uh, of Franklin and Hampshire County. So it's not that everybody's going to come at the same time. It's going to be people know that they can come between 10 o'clock in the morning and 530 in the afternoon. And what they buy from this this display and this function is going to contribute to that cause. John. Uh, John Stern. Uh, uh, unfortunately, yeah. you got bad information from our police chief. Um, we, uh, uh, as the Zoning Board of Appeals, we have kind of an overlapping, but also independent jurisdiction over uh, traffic flow and parking. We do not defer to the planning board. We have to consider it ourselves. Um, so whatever he said was really wrong. We have to evaluate whether the traffic flow, the, the whether it, the assets or detriments uh, relative to the other factors. So, I mean, what you, the, ex, the explanation you gave me, I understand you're gonna have basically, you know, light kind of uh, attendance, uh, not more than, you know, probably 10 cars there at any one time coming going over the course of the day, or I'm not sure should say 10, but just a few. It's not like you have a, a, you know, you're not having a concert there where everybody Correct. Is going at the same Correct. time. Correct. Uh, now, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think we've ever seen any document that uh, that you had given to the planning board relative to traffic, or did you submit it the last time? I don't remember looking at it. Um, that's why I asked. This is the first I've heard of anything to do with traffic. Well, other well, than I did, other, I did bring other it up than the traffic evening. flow and safety, including parking and loading. Um, the parking and loading we discussed because of the report that was given by, I don't even remember the name of the people um, that did that. It was uh, the company that came, that did the report of parking and where handicapped needed to be. And um, what was the title of that, Jen? Do you remember, do you have that with you? I, I, all right, I have a, so, um, they had a plan that was done that showed the number of parking spaces, where the sign was going to be, where the, in, um, where the exit and entrance was going to be, where the tent was going to be in the back of the property, um, as far as um, their events were going to be happening. Uh, I don't remember the name of the company. Do, you don't remember that, Dale? I don't, and I, I wasn't prepared. I should have printed it off before tonight um, to get that information back so that I had that. But wouldn't that be part of you presented anyways to the ZBA? Didn't you see that? Did you see that plan? I don't think, I don't remember ever seeing it. Did we? Anybody else remember? We did talk about the hours of operation, and like Dale said, that the hours are going to be opposite from the auction house, and so they won't overlap. And I remember, I recollect the conversation saying that um, it's it's not going to impede on the traffic in that location. Um, yeah, Jen, I get that. I mean, but based on what? You know, based on, on you know. Based on, you know, the applicant thinks that they will have no more traffic than Cumberland Farms. I mean, or you know, how, that's how the applicant's comparing it. I mean, you know, I, no. I just I I want this, it, I want candle. I want this business to succeed in town, but we have a strict criteria, and we have a lot of people in town that want to make sure that we do our job to the highest level of 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 expertise. And it's hard for me to sit back here and say that the applicant told us that without a, without a traffic, didn't, can't tell us how many cars a day, can't tell us 
the the thing here says that there'll be multiple trucks coming in and out per day or a few trucks per day, right? So we know that that area five and 10 has no breakdown lanes, okay? We know, we know that. We know that further down where Yankee Candle is, they're going to have breakdown lanes. We know where the Dollar General is. They're going to widen the road. They had to have multiple traffic studies. Planning board didn't even like the peer review. And everybody in town still thinks that there's going to be huge catastrophes there. So how can we just go ahead and say, all right, new retail location, same permit, same everything, no traffic study, no engineering, no hard numbers on traffic count based on any type of uh, other close model. There's no other stores like this and just say, yeah, okay, it's great. And that's apparently what the planning board did. And, and, and now here we are where this is also on our agenda and I wanna do everything I can to make sure that this place doesn't stay vacant and a business goes there that's good for the community. And that's great, but how do we make sure that we have at least some evidence to say, to give Miss Whitney a blessing and say, we want you to do business here. This is, um, I, I don't know if you can see me, but- I, I love hang, on, hang on a second. We're talking over each other again, please. Name please, and let's give a chance, a break so that we don't get, um, into a verbiage with each other. <laughs> Thank you. I, this is Dale. I apologize. I lost connection, so I'm on my phone now. So I can't see everybody or what's going on. Um, but I, as many meetings as we've had, this is the first time I've heard about this specific thing. Other than the traffic flow and safety, including parking and loading. The parking we did, the loading we did, traffic flow and safety. I talked to the chief of police and I didn't know I had to go forth and hire another engineer in order to do something specific like this. This has never been brought up to me. And ma'am, Adam, speaking back, there's no specific requirement for you to hire anybody. I'm but just, just saying that that we we have for the past couple of years, we go over these special permits and... <clears throat> there's a lot of questions that are raised. And I don't know if you heard me before, I, I want you to use this business. I want that building to be occupied, but we know that there's no breakdown lanes there. So it's tough for people slowing down, turning in there. We, we know that as a part of, of that stretch of road and we don't know for sure, or even you know, you said there's going to be, you're open from 10 to five, you're going to have vehicles in and out. And what you presented to us just now was you didn't feel as though there'd be any more vehicles than Cumberland Farms. This is Dale. I was yeah. using it as an example of the way the traffic flow operates in Cumberland Farms versus an event at Douglas Austin. Right. And, and I just, Cumberland Farms is, is very busy. And that business before it opened had to do a lot with traffic studies, independent peer review, all this stuff, planning board required all that. And, you know, to speak to what the chief may or may not have told you, I don't know, but yes, traffic is a big part of site plan review for the planning board. It does, as Mr. Siversky say, also overlap on whether or not we grant a special permit. Okay, so, this is uh, so that's why I'm, I, mean, I don't know what you heard and what I didn't. I just want to have a clear idea based on some type of evidentiary factor, what you're expecting for cars per day or cars per hour or and how many deliveries drop-offs you have listed here um, that you're going to have small moving trucks would be dropping off and picking up on a regular basis. So a regular basis is once a day, once a week, twice during business hours. Those are all questions that are, that people, especially us want to kind of want to know to see if there's going to be an, an impact. So when we decide that we are going to grant this or deny it, I, I would hope that we're going to work with you here, but um, that we have something to fall back on because a lot of people in the community are very concerned about traffic safety and the environment and all these criteria that we have to follow in order to issue a special permit. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes. John, uh, this is John Staberski. Uh, Ms. Whitney, let me suggest something to you because, um, you know, we do have to evaluate this particular criteria as part of our jobs. 
Uh, and I think, and, and I'd like to go through the rest of them, but may, we might have to postpone voting on this for one more meeting. But in the interim, I think uh, the whatever report you gave to the planning board, you should give to us and we should be able to see it and maybe ask questions on it at the next meeting. The other thing is I know you have another business in Greenfield that is going to operate along the same lines as this one. Uh, you know, I don't know if you're going to have as many stalls, how much square footage, but uh, I think over the course of a, of a period of time, you could do a count of how many people come in there on a daily basis and at what times. So you could give, you could, and it's only, you know, eight miles away, you could come back to us and say, well, we have a frequency of having, and I'm just giving this as an example, mm -hmm. average of two customers an hour or five customers an hour. And at eight o'clock we have most and at four o'clock we have the least or, or something like that. So we have an understanding of how much traffic this new business is going to add to five and 10. Um, so, for example, if you were to come back to us and say at five o'clock, there were 75 cars go out there in an hour, we'd have concerns. But if you say there's five cars in an hour, we might not have any concerns. I don't know, but it's but but we don't have any kind of evidence to be able to evaluate this particular criteria. Um, and I'm sorry you weren't told about this beforehand, but it is what we have been doing for other special permits. Um, Mr. Chair, yes. may I speak? Yes. yes, David Potter. Yes, thank you, David Potter. Uh, guys, I'm not sure we're treating this equally or, or consistently as other um, applications for special permits. And I'm thinking of the candle factory that just went in. Uh, it didn't seem to me that we had any official um, reading or review of um, you know, their expected traffic flow. And I, I get it, it's not a retail place, but, um, you know, they're going to have deliveries and such. And, um, you know, the other point that I think Adam was bringing up was uh, the breakdown lane uh, issue, but, you know, in the traffic safety, I, I think it's a little bit excessive to apply the same sort of um, approach or you know uh, concerns to this business in this location uh, compared to Cumberland Farms or the Dollar General, there's no intersection. It's it's not the same kind of um, uh, uh, you know uh, factors uh, and multiple factors that are at play. Um, so uh, you know if we're not asking Miss Whitney to or requiring her to get some official uh, study done then why can't we just hear her out right now as to what John is saying? What is the Greenfield uh, business typically seeing? Um, how might this be a little bit bigger perhaps or a little bit busier perhaps and, um, uh, you know, uh, move on? If, if she can give us that information now, great. You know, uh, I, I, you know it's, up, it's up to her though. I can, this is Dale. Um, I would be happy to tell you, I have a pretty good estimate on how many customers that we get on a regular basis, Monday through Thursday versus Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, but one of the things that I don't know if in, in all honesty, I could say, yes, I could give you that information, but it's apples to oranges. We have people walking the streets of Greenfield coming from the new doctor's office down the road walking into the shop and doing their purchases and leaving. So there's no car even involved. So with each individual person that is walking the street and coming in, um, um, John, I believe you're one of them that used to walk down the street and come in the, in the store. How would I be able to compare that to a car driving into the parking lot of Deerfield? If, if I could, uh, I would say that you'd probably have less frequent amounts of people at the gables than somebody just walking down the street and popping in uh, because it, 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 they have to have a specific intent to go there. So, uh, you know, but to know what 
the frequency of uh, of the that retail establishment will will aid us in understanding you know how busy that will be uh, I mean you know when I when I walk down you know, so uh, during my lunch break every once in a while I uh, go down to the uh, eat lunch somewhere down there and just walk around and see if there's anything I needed I would buy some fishing lures occasionally right <laughs> uh, and that's what I usually went there for because I could get them from the street. Uh, uh, but uh, but you're not going to have that here. But it, but when I was there, you know, there were very few people there, maybe one or two other customers. Uh, so I know there it's not, you know, populated a lot. And I mm-hmm. and, and I think and, and what I'm, you know, so I have an understanding based upon my own personal view, but that should not matter in this hearing. It's what you tell us, okay. what you expect to have for customers and what you base it on. And if you base it on what you're doing in Greenfield, that'll give us evidence that we can make a decision on. Okay. This is Dale again. Um, if I was to compare on Greenfield, if I was to use Monday through Thursday, I would say that we would have approximately 15 to 20 cars that come in on, on a day. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, perhaps 30 cars a day from 10 o'clock to 5.30. And that's honest. Christmas, the week of Christmas, there's maybe 40 cars a day. Um, so it's a little bit more than five or six cars, but it's spanned out. It's it's coming and going so uh, so spaced that a lot of people don't even realize, you know, that there's two or three people at one time um, in there. So I'm sorry, I've got a dog feet fight under my feet here. So I apologize. So, so, so just to extrapolate this, the worst case scenario, Christmas week. There are 40 cars a day, um, and and that's and you're open and, and if you're open eight hours a day, is that the, how many Correct. hours are you open? So that's five cars an hour, at worst, on Case scenario. The week, and then on your Monday, Tuesday, and Monday through Thursdays, it's ten cars a day. So that's less than two cars an hour. I mean Correct. that. I mean, that's the kind of volume that we're, you know, we're, we need to kind of just understand to, to help evaluate this. Okay. And that makes sense to me. That's, that's consistent with my personal experience with, with the store in Greenfield. Okay. At least in terms of what I've been in there and seen. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Is David Potter. Yes, David. Uh, I, I'm agreeing with John's reasoning at this point um, in terms of, uh, you know, comparing the the flow of customers there in Greenfield with what could potentially happen in Deerfield. I think that in Greenfield they will have that walking pedestrian um, customer, um, whereas we won't. But in Deerfield, we do have. Uh, more of a constellation of antiques. It's part of the, the culture of that stretch of five and 10. So we're bound to have uh, maybe more cars than in Greenfield, where, you know, or to make up the difference they, that they have pedestrians, we'll have a few more cars. Um, but I think that um, it's... Uh... Oh, sorry, I, I think I... Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. I heard all that, Mr. Potter. Mr. Chairman, I have a follow-up comment. Yes. Adam. Adam, yeah, this, uh, well, I agree with Mr. Staberski and Mr. Potter, and, you know, I think that, um, you know, we just need something, you know, to show how you ca- came to this. You know, that's what we're looking for. And, and um, we don't know your business, me personally, but, you know, showing not saying that you necessarily need it or there's no requirement by law that you need a traffic engineer um but doing some type of count to, to present to us that i did a count um and you know we're expecting this many customers per day and this many deliveries and we're having vehicles come in and out we can't you know it's hard to say um you know like i said before what is 
a few deliveries or a few trucks or um it's hard this is dale it's very difficult to say how many we could have one person come into the shop and buy an antique chair they will get a pickup to come in pick up the chair and leave it's not like it's a, a main um construction vehicle that would be coming in it would be a pickup truck right. that would be coming in to pick it up right and um, I, I don't know if we want to keep going but i my other question is on the 20 to 60 vendors correct could you could you explain that a little bit there they come in and out on a regular basis some of them come once a week some of them come once a month um we have three or four clerks that work on a daily basis. So there's, but they'd be coming at 10 in the morning and leaving at 5.30 at night. Um, but other people will be bringing in uh, their products that they're gonna be selling sporadically during the week. And some people, like I said, come once or twice a week. Some people come once a month. It's, it's difficult to give you a number on the people who are gonna be in the deer field location versus what's in the greenfield location so if we have 60 vendors let's say over a month period of time two of them may show up per day which would equal 60 vendors mm -hmm. three or four might show up on a slow day which is usually wednesday tuesday and wednesday is our slowest days and they like to come in during the slow times because there is less interference with customers on the floor because mo all the other vendors do not have access to the building when it's closed. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Potter. Yeah, um, thank you, David Potter. Uh, following up on Adam's uh, line of questioning, um, it seems to me that there is not a big concern about regular deliveries many deliveries. This is personal people, business people, their own retail vending space. They're filling it up with stuff that they've gone out and collected over a weekend of tag selling or, you know, estate shopping and, and bringing it by when it's convenient for them. Um, I don't think we're dealing with semis. I don't think we're dealing with um, multiple deliveries by multiple trucks per day. Um, there's a lot of space in that parking area. Um, it, you know, you can, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can circumvent the whole building on, on, in a truck, right? If you needed to go around the back or uh, what have you. Um, so uh, to, to, to be brief, it sounds to me like a perfectly reasonable um, uh, flow of traffic and, and, and sufficient space um, uh, and, 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 and not, um, you know, a concern for congestion and, uh, uh, you know, chaos. Mr. Uh, Chairman. Uh, Mr. I, Decker. Uh, I have one question. Um, with the auction site across the street, I believe the auction starts 5, 36 o'clock at night. Is there, is there going to be any confusion or what have you um, with the, uh, with closing at 5.30? And are we gonna end up with a lot of people uh, coming early uh, before they go to the auction, go across the street to the show and then go to the auction and then wanna maybe go back later? Or how much is that gonna mitigate? We close at 5.30. So if, if I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, this is Dale Whitney. Um, if we go, we close at 5.30. So if we decided to close at a, a later time, I guess I would have to contact you and let you know. As of right now, by the time 5.30 rolls around, the clerks are ready to go home. If people come and purchase something prior to that, I don't even know how that's gonna work out yet because it's, I haven't had that situation. Um, my guess, and I, I don't even know if the other antique shops up the road are open on Friday night or Friday afternoons to see if they're coming to our new location. I'm sure that they're also going to the one down the street and also the one down um, where the old five and 10 gallery would be. Um, 
So it's very difficult for me to give you an exact answer to that because I'm not in the situation yet. Um, I do know we close at 5.30 and it, the other one starts at six o'clock. So there should be the calm before the storm of my clerks leaving at 5.30 and them already being there starting the option at six o'clock. It's not on TV. They heard me. Okay, any other questions? Uh, I, I have one. Um, you said, is it going to be six days a week, five days a week, seven days a week? You're not getting seven days a week. Seven days a week. Seven days a week, except for major holidays like we were closed for Easter, Christmas, Thanksgiving. We close early Christmas Eve, early um, the night before Thanksgiving, um, and severe severe weather, of course. Okay. So major uh, holidays. Chair, another question. Uh, I don't think this, I don't know, I've been on there lately, but I think Friday nights when they have the, the, uh, the open for people to look at the uh, things for sale, that gets congested. congested. I haven't been there in a while, so I don't know if that continues. Can anyone make a comment on what Friday night looks like before they start the auction, when they come and view the, uh, the materials gonna, that were going to be sold? Yes, Bernie. I'm sorry, it's Mr. Potter. I, I've seen it. It's not that congested at all. No, and I, I, John Fabersky, I can climb in as well, and I can, I, I occasionally go there, and it, and although it is busier because uh, there are more people coming in and out, but it's a flow, and uh, Douglas Galleries has had it open. I, they used to do it three to six. And now it's open more, but it's 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 not everybody coming at once. It's kind of uh, in and out, but busy, a lot busy. But nothing that I of safety during that period of time. Other comments. John, I um, mean, Adam. Uh, yes, Adam. Uh, well, last time when Miss Whitney was here, she talked about some septic stuff going on. Did that get cleared up yet, ma'am? This is Dale. Um, the Title V has been ordered, and it's supposed to be done. Well, I can't get approval by the building inspector until it is. Right, but you <laughs> spoke to us, Adam, again, that depending on the results of that, you may have to alter your parking plan. We found the septic tank. If you're looking at the building, it is on the right-hand side where the driveway comes around in the back of the building. Mm -hmm. So if there is two, we could not find the other one. We did find that one and it's, we found the corner pin of where the, um, it's definitely on this land because um, if you're going, if you're looking at the right-hand side of the building, where the driveway goes around back, the cover is right there on the right-hand side of the driveway. So we have found it. Building inspector, comment, building inspector, please. Um, I don't think the Board of Health has received anything. Like, I, I don't really know where the leach field is. I, I have no more information on that um, to comment on. So we're talking so about the, the Board of Health has not looked at it then? Yeah, that's all Richard's department, but the parking issue came up because where would the leach field be located if it, or where is it located now? Not so much the septic tank. Um, so, but I, you know, once again, I don't have any information. on it. This is Dale again. Thank you. Wouldn't, wouldn't the leach field be in the same proximity of the septic tank? Not necessarily, no, it can go anywhere. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm aware that that needs to be taken care of. And in the event that if there's a part of the parking lot that we need to close off, then that's what we do. Um, whatever it takes to make it work. So, uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, John. Uh, John Staberski. 
uh, so Ms. Whitney, if uh, if I'm understanding this right, your um, the, the the septic tank is in the rear of the facility and not the front. Is that right? That's right. So, uh, and is there parking in the rear of the facility? No. So, um, is there room to put a leach field back there? I'm sorry. One more time. Is there is there is there room to put a leach field in the rear, or is it butt up too close to wetland, it, railroad, and all sorts? There's of there's room for for it to come towards the road, and there's room for it to go in the back part of the building. My assumption. I'm I'm not a septic engineer, so I. But my septic here at my home is the same distance from my house, then that would be um, to where we found the, the cover to the septic. Do you think you would lose a, an appreciable amount of parking spaces if you had None. a the leach field? None. None? So your parking no. plan would not change? No. That wasn't even included. May I make a suggestion, Bernie? Yes. This is Jennifer Gannett. Um, a couple things. Carolyn's hand's been up and she would like to say something, but I just wanted to make it, that could be a condition that you put on the permit that if a leach field or something changes when they you know, go to the Board of Health, that they come back to the ZBA for review or approval, or you know, that would just be a condition that would be put in place. Okay, I didn't see your hand up, Carolyn, but Worst. Yes, Carolyn. Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I have another meeting at seven. I just wanted to say that um, I make a comment that um, I'm supportive of uh, this business because, you know, it has been a vacant or underused building for so many years. I remember years and years ago, it was so attractive and, um, you know, had quite a lot of traffic in and out. I honestly don't feel that it would be a threat to the traffic load in that area too much because it's very similar to the five and 10 antique gallery at the other end of town um, as you go over the Cheapside Bridge, which has terrible parking and access issues. And, um, you know, I've been going there for years and, and people seem to manage it okay. Um, even though there's several vendors, I don't think there's as many vendors, but um, there's there's several, a few dozen anyway, um, vendors in that building as well. So um, I I am supportive of that just because it's an underused, va almost vacant building now, and it would be um, lovely to have more business in town. So I just wanted to say that um, she so certainly can't get an occupancy permit until the septic system is sorted out. So it can be a condition, but it doesn't matter one way or the other. It's a regulatory issue. She can't occupy the building without septic. So um, thank you. That's all I just wanted to say. I appreciate it. I'm sorry I interrupted your meeting. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, Mr. is it Mr. Decker? Yes, thank you. Mr. Decker. My question is, if there was a septic system put in, would it likely have to be a raised system? And would that eat into the parking? Because right now I assume that it's ground level. And, uh, but if it had to be a raised system because of the uh, uh, soil conditions, uh, would that take a lot of space? Um we're not allowed to use a raised system in new construction. This is pre-existing. So my assumption would be that because it's pre-existing, we could put a raised system in and you could fit it in, Bob. But okay. um, I would I would defer to Dick on this because um, you know we haven't done very many raised systems. So I'm not 100% sure of the size of the mound, but... I mean, you can get it fixed no matter what if you have the money. So it's it's really an issue of trying to figure out what to do. But it's pre-existing, so it it's it's not new construction. So you do have the ability to have um, a raised system. 
And but because of the size of the building, the system might have to be really large. Uh, Mr. Decker, it's going to depend upon uh, what the use is. I'm no expert, but I understand it's a number of bathrooms they're going to have. Um, a retail unit will not need as much um, Leachfield area as, say, for example, an apartment house would have. And it has to be four feet, I believe, four feet above the mean water table. So that determines how high the mound has to be. Um, and that also, like you said, if it's going to be raised, they're not going to be driving over it. So, but those are those are areas that, are the, that we need to have an expert look at, not us. <clears throat> but those are good questions. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Staberski. Uh, John Staberski, uh, you know, I understand this issue. And what I'm going to suggest we do is when we, if we grant this permit to, uh, to make a condition that obviously there be a uh, approved septic system design, and if it substantially impacts the parking that she needs to come back to us. And if it doesn't substantially impact the parking, she's okay. Um, uh, because I, I, you know, we're not going to be doing Title Five work, and it's, it's not going to affect the parking. You know, all the further. Mr. Chair, um, Mr. Chair, who was that? Adams? Yes, Adams. Yeah, I would tend to agree with Diversity if we we're going to issue the permit that kind of outside of our purview, but they got to have it. And then I guess my only other, I have another question for the applicant. It hasn't been addressed. Um, is she going to be using or the company going to be using or converting any of the space there, the offices into uh, residence apartments or uh, like Airbnb or anything like that? To help this, is, this is Dale Whitney. Um, there's already an apartment upstairs and it will be used um, by one of the tenants, one of the clerks. So you already have a, a rental agreement. So this is going to be a mixed occupancy a mixed use facility with yes I, uh, there, in, yeah. in the same building yes and, and you're over 4,000 square feet only six uh, what, uh, the, the whole total building yes yes have you had any conversations and I'm just this is I'm kind of talking out of turn I'm not giving you any advice but with a mixed occupancy like that you might want to stop by and talk to the fire department. I already talked to the fire department and I've had the fire inspector um, come in and he's been through the apartment, not, not Deerfield fire inspector. Um, it's, I think it's Western mass fire and safety, and they're going to be putting in new, um, a new system in. It kind of falls for us because we have a little bit of um, adequacy, you know, 23 uses of public services. Um, but uh, yeah, there, there's definitely, and I'm not sure, but the building inspector, that when you have a mixed occupancy, you can create other headaches for you, ma'am. That's all. I just want to make sure that you, you reach out. Um, the building inspector already went through with me. Building I'm sorry. Inspector, I'd, like to I'd like to comment on that. I, I asked you for a review of the life safety systems and you gave me a review of the structure of the building. So, I mean, there's still going to be an issue there. The mercantile use in your size doesn't force a sprinkler, but getting the mixed use might. Um, yeah, the mixed use. I still got to work that detail out. Through you or through the, the company from Massachusetts? Well, I don't think they're... I, I need either to tell you what to do or you need to show me what you plan to do. And I preferred if you showed me how it's going to work. Okay. Are you the, I'm, this is Dale. Are you the gentleman that walked through with us? Yes, I am. Okay. All right. I, and I put, I mean, I wrote you a letter specifically asking for a review of the mechanical and life safety systems. So I've been, that's where we're at on the building permit side. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Decker. Uh, Mr. Staberski suggested that if it, uh, depending upon, um, I don't know quite the word he used, but the square footage that was going to be involved, if, if the leach field had to take up so many square feet, does he want to put a number of square feet to it before it would, they'd have to come back and review it again with us? Uh, it, uh, 
Bob, I'm, I'd say we could discuss that at the uh, when we get to the conditions, uh, and because uh, Ms. Whitney, be, I'm going to ask you before we close our hearing that you uh, submit or file with us your parking plan. So we can look at it. Okay. All right. Any other questions on uh, 22? Uh, 23, adequacy of utilities and other public services. Comments, questions? Would you like to read it to us, uh, Dale? Yes, one moment. Uh, I have in here, per our inspections, we are adequate with our utilities and we will be having a bathroom that will be handicapped accessible. So there's two current bathrooms downstairs. One of them is going to be made handicapped accessible and the other will be um, set up like a family bathroom. Uh, we have the, as far, uh, I, I, I hesitate saying anything because when um, I went through with the building inspector, I was expecting that he would point out things that were needed and the, he checked the structure and everything that was there. And even though that we do need to clean up a lot of stuff that was left by the old, uh, well, the post office, when they were there, there's a lot of um, wires and um, things for internet and um, stuff like IT wires and stuff that's going through. There's new circuit breakers that have been added and, um, but there has been no talk of, of anything else that was needed at that time. Um, so there's circuit breakers upstairs, there's circuit breakers downstairs. Um, and there's also some older circuit breakers that are in the back part by the garage. So we have, um, and, and we did look at all of that stuff. Um, we have a, Furnace that's approximately, I think they said 20, it was replaced about 20 years ago. It was still being used this winter when I was in there. All the rooms, it's got a six, uh, six, um, six section, what are they, zoned. It's uh, got six different zones to it um, and everything looked like it was in good condition. I was going to have it cleaned prior to us um, moving in, but uh, I haven't gotten to that point yet. It has a maintenance log when saying the last time that it had been updated, but it was working every time that I went through this winter. And I went into every room multiple times. Oh, hang on a second. Yeah. Comment by the uh, building. Comment by the uh, building uh, inspector. On the utilities? Yeah. From your I mean, from your perspective, I think you're looking at it more, um, you know, city sewer, power lines coming in. My perspective, I, I, act, I specifically wrote a letter asking for a code review of the mechanical and life safety, safety systems. But that, I don't think that's the, we're comparing the same two things here at all. Um, Mr. Chair? Yes, John. Uh, Ms. Whitney, I think you mis uh, misunderstand that particular uh, criteria. Our interest is only the service of public utilities, as the building inspector had indicated, whether there's adequate electricity, water, and, and sewer slash septic, uh, those types of things. So we don't really care what's going on in the interior building. That's the, that's the building inspector's purview. Uh, and and I am very comfortable along that stretch of road that you have all the utilities you'd ever need for that building, uh, particularly since you're going to close now. Um, this is Dale. I know I sent a code review because I had a code review done, and I sent it. I don't know if it went to the planning board or if it went to... One of the other boards. Um, Miss Whitney? Yes. That was a, a code review that was done for the structure. It wasn't a code review for the building. So they're different things. 
right, Bob? Correct. And I and I still I just don't think that affects this question at the zoning board. That's right. more of the building department. We don't we don't need that. That's not our that's not our jurisdiction. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Number two, uh, section twenty four, neighborhood characteristics and social structure. Our intent is to clean. It's going to be repainted, uh, cleaned up, repaired in the areas that it needs to be repaired. We're going to create a neat environment and put the property back into good standing and condition. The sign is going to be re is going to be painted. Um, we're going to change the lights that are outdoors to solar lights that go down onto the sign. Um, the sign is going to be the same, um, the same size as it currently is. Um, and I, I did send a couple of samples to, I thought, Jen to, to show Adam, an example. Adam? Adam. Yeah, uh, yeah, sounds good. I just uh, just was curious on if you're going to be doing what type of your construction first, any type of construction, or just cos cosmetics. Cosmetics. So no footprint There's or walls being moved or any of that stuff. No. Okay. Any other comments? Uh, Twenty five impact on the natural environment. Dale? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm reading my, my comment here. The, uh, I put that there would be no impact on the natural environment that is currently there. So uh, we're hoping to improve the natural environment instead of you know cleaning it up, get the brush cut down, um, and just improving the location in every aspect possible. Um, we're not going to be having anything that's going to be running out into the land or into the little brooks that run around the property. We're not going to be having anything that's go going to be um, bad that looks from the road so that when you drive by, people are hoping is going to notice that it's, you know, wow, this has really come a long way. That's our intent. That is in the plan. Um, so as far as the natural environment is concerned, it's going to improve the overall appearance of the property and, and, and construction and, and condition. Okay, comments? comments. comments. Yes, uh, uh, Ms. Whitney, are you, do you own the property now? Or is it, is it property been closed on? No, not until the 14th of May. Okay. God willing. Okay. All right. Um, I just want to just make sure back to what I mean. I, I like I said before. I definitely want you to do business in town, and we just have the criteria we have to follow. What would you think would be, you know, what what's your total square footage there, and then how many people maximum would you think you would have like on your best best day? Our total is 15,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. We currently in Greenfield have 16,000 square feet uh, that incorporates three floors, but it has a center stairway, which takes up a lot of square footage as far as um, business square footage. In Deerfield, there isn't that. The only part that would be um, less would be the old kitchen. We're not going to be using that for anything. Um, and the, and the back, uh, the garage area. So I'm going to say 13,000 square feet is going to be used for business. And you're uh, going to remove that, uh, the kitchen area and all that? No, we're going to use it for storage. But you're going to keep the stove and stuff in there? There's no stove. The only thing that's in there is a, st is a sink. An old sink. Okay. That's all that's oh and the grill the, the fan that was over the um the cook stove, the ventilation fan is there. I just but I, no. you know, just something to think about because obviously with a kitchen the buildings 
you know, we may condition the permit to stay with you, not with the property. Do you understand? Okay. That? Yes, I do. Because but that, that whole section is not going to be used anything except for uh, storage area and uh, for us to glue a chair back together or um, have a little table in there for the clerks to eat their lunch or something simple like that. It's not going to be part of the um, public area. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't see any of the hands up. Any other questions? Comments? 26, potential uh, physical impact, including impact in town services, tax base, and employment. I think um, you answered that. But. Right, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, this is Dale, and we're going to be bringing in 20 to 60 vendors, allowing sales and additional employment, not only in our shop, but bringing additional commerce to the town along with other new businesses in the area. The tax base should not be changed other than what it is right now, um, unless the value of the property goes up and then that would change the tax base there. Um, but even when we moved into Greenfield, and I'm not saying that to pat myself on the back or anything like that, I actually helped two other places um, open little antique shops to bring more customer base to Greenfield, and we now have been um, marked as a destination location. We were number one um, on Eastern, um, the East Coast, uh, two years in a row. We've won the uh, Reader's Choice Award for six years in a row by people that were outside of Massachusetts. So we have a draw from New York and Connecticut and Rhode Island and so on and so forth. So. Greenfield is seeing uh, more commerce being done and the restaurants, we send people to the restaurants in the area. So we're adding to the commerce in Greenfield. Um, I'm not saying Deerfield needs any more additions, but we do know that people come to see us because we offer a, a great um, experience for people who like to shop for antiques and collectibles. Any other comments? Okay. Miss um, Whitney, thank you for being patient. Um, I know it's been a long process, but we've been held to the fire about asking these questions because of other issues. So anyone that comes before us is going to go through the same um, evaluation that other people have gone through and I know it's I know it's frustrating uh, but I, I know you've been you're going to try to be patient with us um, and it is not easy uh, and thank you for being considerate and, and patient at, uh, that we're, of what we're trying to do um, we're trying to do the best we can there are questions we get questions from people in town so we're trying to answer those so that we look like we're being fair to everyone, I know that's a concern for the, uh, all the board members that we're going to be fair and consistent to everybody. Um, even though it might sound as if we're looking at a, for a lot of things, but we're trying to be fair about it. Mm -hmm. So thank you for your your uh, your patience with us. Okay, now gentlemen, how are we going to proceed here? Are we want to take a vote on this. We have a motion for this. We have uh, concerns. Um, do I have a motion from someone? Well, the only thing that I, I feel John Staberski. The only thing I feel a little uncomfortable about is that we don't have the parking plan. If we could see that and have that entered now, because that's going to be dependent a little bit on um, on what we're on, on a septic system design contingency. Um, Let me look and see if I can find it in my email. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I mean, I'd like to get this done for you, Ms. Whitney, now if we can, uh, and I'd be, I'd be happy to take the time to look through that document now, uh, if it got filed, uh, if we could submit it into evidence, uh, I feel comfortable closing the hearing and voting on this at this point, but, it, but that is, the, that, that ties into the system design. Yeah, that, that would be great if we could. Um... Jen, you're looking, I, 
I'm I'm sorry if I act confused. It's just like I feel like I've sent this out so many times, and I'm I'm just not sure where it's gone to. So. What is the, um, what is your, Jen, what is your um, email? They may have sent it to you. You're, you're muted. It's atk.yearfield.ma. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Regarding parking. You think, I think I agree with you, John. The problem we're having is we don't know what the septic's going to look like. And that's going to determine what's, what, where the septic is going to go and the size of it. Um, if, we're, if we're comfortable with, with uh, leaving it where if there's a change that she comes back to us, then um, we can go from there. But I think that's the board has to decide if we're comfortable going that way. Um, Adam, and Bernie. Uh, Adam. I uh, thanks, Mr. Up. It also may uh, shut down one of the entrances or exits, oh, you know. Okay. Yes. Um, Excuse me, Mr. Uh, Chair. Jennifer, this is yes. Jennifer. Um, I just wanted to say, you know, building inspector also indicated that um, the septic system was not in our purview. If you make it a condition such as Jennifer Gannett's suggestion of adding it as a condition um, in the location that Ms. Whitney indicated that the septic system is in the back of the building, there shouldn't really be much impact on parking and you can establish that as a condition of the permit. Well, you're right, Ms. Remillard, Adam, the septic system in and of itself is a board of health issue, but the placement of it, we need to have, there needs to be a new design and it could um, have to be located because of soil samples or location of the building on one side or the other, we don't know that yet. Right, but if you're making it as a condition of the permit, if there doesn't need to make a change prior to, um, as Carolyn also you know, mentioned before she left our meeting, that, sorry, this is Jennifer Remillard again, um, that there is, you know, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. There is no, um, detriment to the parking and, or excuse me there would be no occupancy um give a permit given to the business regardless you know if there is no um working septic so i i don't see how if you have that as a condition she wouldn't even be able to occupy the building without a working septic uh yeah mr chair uh, david yes. potter yep um, I guess I'm wondering what is the worst possible concern that people have if the septic needed to be to one side or the other? How much impact do you imagine it would have and why would this be so bad? Uh, is, it a, is it an aesthetic issue or is it like a, a sufficiency of parking issue? And maybe um, she could speak to that, but um, that's, that's what I have to say. Okay, Mr. Potter, let me, let me go back a step here. Uh, Mr. Decker, you can uh, agree with me on this. This this was farmland at one time. The piece next to it is wet. And a person tried to put stuff into the wetlands next and was turned down. So this is a wet area. And this could be an issue with wetlands being in a buffer zone. So these are concerns. I understand, but what? So, what's the worst possible concern? That's well, what I'm asking. Could, it could be half of that parking lot being taken. So, and so, you think that maybe she could speak to that issue? If if the whole half of the parking lot was taken, would it impact the business to that degree that it wouldn't be viable? Or what? What would what would the board's I, I concern be? I don't think so. That's our concern. We're just saying that if we issue the. Um, the variance of uh, variance, excuse me, the uh, special permit with these conditions in there. And I don't have a problem with that, but it could significantly affect the parking. And that's what we're concerned about. And I am concerned about that doesn't mean it's going to stop it, but it's going to change the overall outlook here. Um, and we just need to know what that is. We're, we're coming, we're, we're, we're making the decision with not quite as much information, I think, as we need, but we can work around that if we're, if the board is willing to do that. John, I think you were next. 
Yeah, Mr. Sadowski, John Staberski. I just quickly uh, counted up the parking spaces. I may be off a little bit. Uh, it says, uh, and it says it includes 100 on the left hand side, parking for 104. And I don't think it includes the area to the very bottom. Um, given the frequency that you have said, Ms. Whitney, of uh, the people who are going to be using the facility. You know, uh, to, at most, you have 10 people in there an hour. That's less than 10% of your parking. I mean, obviously you're gonna have employees and if you have a residence there, there'll be some parking like that. But I could force, and, and our interest, uh, Mr. Potter, in this is if there's not adequate parking, and it backs up and traffic backs up onto route five and 10, that becomes a safety concern. And that's when it kind of, then, then that becomes a factor that we have to weigh. Uh, but from what I see here in this parking plan and from what we've heard from Ms. Whitney uh, at the worst case scenario, that you are far more parking than you'd ever need that would cause a concern for this board in this particular plan. Now, if you lose, I mean, I would say you'd almost have to lose half of the parking before it would become an issue for us, given the frequency of use. I mean, if you had 50 spots, and you're having 10 people an hour at most, you still have a ton of parking. So, um, so, you know, that, and that's why I wanted to see this, to kind of go through this exercise and, and uh, when does it become a concern as a factor for us? I don't, I don't even think it becomes a concern until if she lost half her partner, it's still a concern to us. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, based upon the frequency of use that I hear. Um, so, and, and that's what I wanted to see before we crafted this uh, a condition. Uh, you tell me, Ms. Whitney, what do you think the max amount of, of cars you've ever had there at one time would be? Even if we had 50 cars there at one time, like you said, this is Dale Whitney, there would, even if we took half of the parking lot, like exactly what you said, there would be plenty of parking because there's even places to park that are not on this sign. This is just the best case scenario. So I don't think the lack of parking would be an issue at all. And egress, the entrance and the egress, if you look at the bottom part of the building um, where the driveway comes down and around, right by that corner, um, there is where it says paved parking area, I'm terrible, uh, would be the south side. That's where we found the septic tank. So my thought if a raised system would have to go in it would be on the south side which would have save all of this parking that's on the north end so i don't think it would be an issue and even if it was i would work with you to make sure that we fixed it and it not be an issue So, so and, and, I mean, I feel very comfortable understanding this business, hearing the frequency, seeing the paved parking, the uh, septic tank is now, and, and what the what what the potential is to craft a uh, a condition where we could approve it, and if she loses a substantial part of the parking, and I think we should have discussion on the board on what that should be. Um, that you'd have to come back to us, um, and and we could get this done tonight. So I think that's fair, question, Bernie. Uh, where do we want to go now that we have this? I think we can wrap. We can wrap it up. We could. Uh, I'd feel comfortable closing the public hearing, going into deliberations, talking about conditions, and uh, and seeing if we can can finish this today. Anybody have uh, comments by anyone else? I agree with John, David Potter. Okay, uh, so 
Do I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. 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 Okay. So that means we're done with um, input from the public. Now we're going to go into, oh, we have to vote on this. I'm sorry. We're voting on. Mr. Uh, Chair. Yes, sir. I just, does the app, the applicant is aware that we're closing the public hearing and they're good with us moving forward with this. You want me to hang up? No, no, oh. you can oh. stay. <laughs> I just want, we just want you to know that we're about to possibly take a vote to close the public hearing. And that, and I think we should also, Mr. Chair, before we close the hearing, double check with Jennifer and make sure no one else from the public wants to give any input <clears throat> um, just to cover ourselves and make sure that the um, applicant wants us to move forward. So there's nobody else that's other than the board and the applicants that are on the call at the moment, so. Okay, I, I believe it's customary at this time to ask if they want to withdraw before we take a vote on this. Is that, the, I think the normal procedure, if you want us to proceed. Now, if, if it's denied, it's a two year period of nothingness. I mean, if you, feel, if you feel comfortable in going forward, then fine. But if you want to withdraw and wait, then you also have that option. No, this is Dale Whitney. No, sir, I do not want to wait. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Please. <laughs> All right. So I guess we're into a vote to close public hearing. Adam. Uh, yes. I vote yes. John. Yes. Robert? Yes. And David? Yes. Okay, now we're gonna go into deliberation. Who'd like to open up the deliberation? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Decker. And relative to the parking, uh, I think if, if she maintains a minimum of 50 parking spaces, uh, she shouldn't have to come back to us. Okay. Discussion? That sounds fair. Okay, that's David, David Potter. Right? David Potter. Yeah. Yeah. Any, anyone else? Mr. Chair? This yes. Is Alex? Um, don't, isn't there a requirement? Hmm? Mr. Chair, who do yes. we now at this point, the alternates are out, right? Um, Could I just ask a clarifying question? Yeah, I, should, I just, I, I mean, I'll let the chair run the meeting, but I just wanted sure. to remind them. Yes, no, they no, cannot. Yeah. They cannot vote, but I think we're going to allow them to ask questions. Isn't that what we did in the past? I think we did. I don't think so. When we moved to del deliberations, the voting members were the only people participating. That's cool. I think that's true. Okay. That's what we're, that's what our lawyer told us to do. Okay. But if the board could vote to ask Alex if he had anything right. that we, we can, wanted we can, to hear, that'd be a right. difference. We can take a vote to allow him to speak. Ask questions. That's not. Pardon. So it's okay. I can. I can. Oh, that's all right. If he's that's all right. Our minutes, I, I will move. I I would like to move to uh to suspend our rules if that's what it is <laughs> to allow Alex to ask his question or make his uh, make a statement. Okay. Do I have a second? What about Jen? Well, would I also incur 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 her too. Jennifer too. Yeah. Yes. I second David Potter. Okay. You seconded, David? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. We'll take a vote on this. Uh, John? Yes. Uh, I vote yes. Uh, John? Yes. Yeah, you got me twice, so you might want to mm. ask somebody else. Okay. Um, Mr. Decker? Yes. And David? Yes. How about yeah. me? I didn't vote yet. Oh, and, and Adam. Adam? Yes. Yes, okay. Thank you, John. Okay, so Alex and um, Jennifer, we're going to allow you to, to ask questions. Alex, okay. go for it first. Alex. Okay. Um, so general, generally speaking, um, does this um, 
application count as new construction or is it grandfathered in, so to speak? Carolyn said during the meeting that it was existing construction. So that way, when the septic went in, it could be raised or underneath, if that's okay. what you're septic asking about. Of our jurisdiction. Um, that, yeah. That's uh, cool. Let them do their thing. That's done. I think it's because there's a change in use that's, that yeah. triggers a special permit. It's a right. different use than what was ever there. Right. That would be why they're here for a special permit. That's correct. Does uh, okay. that answer um, your question, Jen? But oh, what? I, oh, I don't have any other questions. That was Alex's question. I was just commenting on what Carolyn had said about uh, the use. Um, I don't have any questions. Okay. I asked them during the session, but thank you for the opportunity. No, no what, Carolyn's, what Carolyn's referring to is, I, I think our zoning bylaws right now do not allow a piece of property that do, does not have a, per, a percable piece of uh, a spot for the septic system. You cannot use a raised bed. Okay. But if you have an existing home, then you are allowed to use a raised bed to continue occupancy under our, is it Title Seven? I think it's Title Seven laws. But that's what she's referring to. Since this is an existing um, piece of property, then they're allowed to do things that you normally wouldn't do if you have new construction. Okay. Okay. In regards to septic, but as it regards to the special permit, it's a change of use. This is what this is not. Yep. There's no permit um, on that place now. That's why we have to meet the criteria. Correct. Mm -hmm. Other so, comments. Um, oh. My question. Sorry, my, just my question is. Um, my comment is that do we does the board need to have a certain number of parking spaces based on the square footage of the uh, Mr. Decker, that's the comment you had made about the 50 spots. Well, I think 50 would be for what she's wanting. She wants a special permit. And we, if we, you know, I think she needs 45 to 50 parking spaces to, just to cover. She's got, John counted them. Was there a hundred there, John? 104. Okay. So, I mean, so I'm just saying that if she, if she has 50, uh, I don't think she has to come back and, and uh, try to squeeze out anything more if she has the 50, because I think that would probably be pretty much take care of, of the use that she's proposed. If she goes to put a restaurant in there again, that's, it wouldn't go. With that's 50. why I asked about the kitchen. Yeah, oh, I know that's why. I was wondering if they were going to serve meals during the day in there. With the kitchen there. Okay, Jen, you have a question. Jen, question? Yeah, so I mean, that's why we had the engineer do this plan because it wanted to see that if it, it met or exceeded the expectations of our bylaws for the use with the number of parking spaces and have handicapped accessible spots, that's why it says that there, there's four ADA accessible spaces mm -hmm. that are slightly larger um, than the rest of them. So I think that we just need to make a, a condition that says not 50, but that meets the requirements of our bylaw so that it's not putting a number on it. In the, because, you know, depending on the square footage, right? Bob, are you still there? Building inspector, Bob, he's gone. No, no, he's no, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, we have the specific requirements, but I don't have them with me. I just know that when it was addressed at the planning board, she was way over. And then. Right. That's, that's why I'm the, saying is that's, if, we, if we just say, oh, we're going to take 50, but the number is actually 60. I don't know what it is for the, the square footage. I just think that it should be that it needs to be adequate and pertain to our zoning bylaw and the requirements um for that space and that use sure yes john so uh, you know i i i've been envisioning a uh, a condition and jennifer i think your advice is good and and uh although i was thinking 50 was more than adequate i would maybe suggest a condition that it uh, that as long as she has a, a parking enough parking that exceeds either meets or exceeds uh, the, what is required under our, uh, 
our regu rules and regulations. Uh, Can I make another comment too? We need to yeah. say whether we're going to approve or deny this project before we actually start saying we're going to have conditions because- I know. We, we, we really didn't talk about it generally. Uh, so I'd like to maybe begin that discussion. I think we should grant this permit. I think she's met the conditions. I think particularly given the fact that this is an existing building that is uh, deteriorating, uh, that I, I think this will this uh, particular business will will improve the property. Uh, I think that there are very, very few negatives when you when you review the criteria and you look at what are the positives and what are the negatives. I don't see too many negatives. I mean, it's hard for me even to stretch to find a negative. I think just about everything you're planning, Ms. Whitney, is a, is a positive there and a positive for our town. So I think we should we should grant this permit. I think there there is the unknown if if septic causes a, a loss of uh, of parking that is impactful, it should be re reevaluated by us. Um, and and I think I we can put together a condition that's consistent with that. Great, thank you. So, question, Mr. Decker. So, John, what you're basically saying is you agree that they met all those conditions fully and you're satisfied with it over. Well, so, so, the, so the way we, so the way we're supposed to uh, evaluate our decision is we look oh. at the assets and the, the assets and the detriments uh, from her plan. I see very, very few, if any detriments in those six criteria to balance all the assets and the so she meets or exceeds those requirements. Yeah, yeah. I just want to get it on record so we have it there. Right, okay. right. Mr. Chairman, David Paul. Yes, David. Uh, Mr. Decker, would you care to share your assessment? Do you have any differing opinions? No, I don't. I just uh, wanted to make sure that we had the information established so that, you know, we all understood that it met the requirements. Okay. So you're, you're in agreement? Yes. Okay. okay. I'm in agreement. I like okay. what I hear. I think that the assets far outweigh the detriments. David okay. Potter. All right. Thank you. Uh, Adam. Uh, well, my only concern is that, you know, and I understand is the traffic. Um, I wish we had more. I wish, I wish, um, I wish we had some more on that. Some more like evidence counts. I, I, I'm taking the applicant at face value as an honest person and feel as though, um, you know, it's not going to be a problem and I hope it's not a problem. I mean, I still think that, you know, at the end of the day, it's a driver's responsibility to, you know, 99% of the crashes out there are the driver's fault or at least the driver's factor. There's, you know, road circumstances and conditions are, are various, a small, factor so you know i think that i support the project and support the permit um but i mean i don't know if we should put some type of condition that if there is you know crashes or if there is it should there be a review i don't know if other people feel that way moving forward but i you know i, I think if it's you know 20 customers a day or 40 customers on the best day and you know, two or three deliveries, I, I think that that's fine. But it's hard to know that without with that not being presented as such, Miss Whitney, you know, that's kind of where we're coming from on 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 these traffic safety concerns. Oh, Jennifer, you have a comment? Yeah, this is uh, Jen Gannon again. I have, um, I was meeting with other applicants today and it was um, said to me again, because the mass DOT isn't even doing their traffic studies because of COVID at the moment. So I think that your idea, Adam, of having some sort of condition that if there is accidents or there are problems that come back that within a certain time frame, like the first year of business or, you know, that that then they that Dale needs to come back to the board with um, to, to talk about that. Yeah, and I don't know if the other members have any appetite for that, but it was just a thought, you know, maybe a two year review I, you know, that's all. Other comments? 
So I would like to make a motion. John Staberski, hold it. Go ahead. I'm sorry, John, go ahead. I just want to recognize no it was comment, you. So I'm trying to trying to expedite this. Uh, so I'd like to make a motion that 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 uh, we grant the special permit with conditions and uh, and the conditions we will take up after we vote on the permit. And we can talk about yours, Adam, and talk about the parking one and anything else. Okay, hey, I Carter, I second. Okay, D oh, hang on a second. I agree with Adam on his, some of his concerns about the and it's hard to tell without them being there. You know, you may not have that much of a traffic and you may, but we're trying to tell you how to run your business or what you're gonna have. And it's kind of hard to tell. I don't think it's gonna be a problem, but it could be. Okay, so we have a second. We have a second, yes, David? David Potter, yes. So second. we're gonna second, we're gonna have a, a vote to grant a special permit to Mr. Uh, Chair, I have a question too. Oh, I'm sorry, Adam. Go ahead. Well, I just I don't know if you want when they made the motion, or if we're going to clarify this. We're granting the special permit to the applicant, not to the property. Correct. In my opinion. That's who's applied. That's the way it works. Well, you can grant the permit to the property, right? But and then have to report it to the deed. But that's not what it's in here as applicants submitted by Dale Whitney for a special permit to, to change the use of 250 Greenfield Road for a multi-purpose dealer of antiques and collectibles. So we're given a permit. I just still think, hurt. Mr. Chair, we can vote on it, but I still think we need a condition that when that when it's recorded with the clerk, that it is to Correct. the applicant. And Mr. Decker could shed some light on that as well not to the property well mr chairman yes mr decker i, I find where mr. coming from the thing about it is i think mrs it's miss whitney or mrs whitney is mrs. mrs is said that she's buying the property to close on may 15th okay and i don't i would assume like everybody else She's going to have to, maybe she has a lot of money and she doesn't need to do any financing, but who's ever financing the operation and the purchase of the real estate is going to want to make sure that they don't buy a dead horse. Uh, and I think if we do restrict it just to her, it may mark, uh, bring the value of that property down. And I don't know that I want to see that happen. I hope that she's successful in the business, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't know that we want to... Uh, cloud the title okay well, that's david a potter yes, can i dave. comment dave. on that yeah I, I don't see anywhere in the language of the uh the the bylaws or regulations here i don't see anywhere where it refers to anything except the applicant i don't see where it gives us the authority to grant anything to the property the property is not the applicant it and i, I it doesn't it, it the applicant has at the end and and some special permits attached to the to the to the property. For example, if Ms. Whitney were to sell it to another antique dealer and was going to continue on with that business, the special permit's been granted. If it's going to be a restaurant, it's a whole other story. Uh, so so it's it, you know the these permits, uh, although they are to the applicant, they do run with the land. Um, if she died tomorrow and her husband wanted to on do with it he likely could be able to um that's just the way these things work uh, so why are we trying to distinguish oh whoa, whoa 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 one at a time go ahead john are you finished yeah no so i don't so i, I think we just follow standard mass law and, and, and grant it to the applicant that's what we're going to do and and if there is some sort of change and it falls within the law that they can have it run with the land it runs with the land it's that's just the way it kind of works um, I mean, I'm no real, I'm not a real estate lawyer, but I've, I've been around enough of this to see how it works, but we have a motion on the floor. Okay. David has a, David had a comment, David. No, I'm all set. Okay. We had a Mr. motion on the floor. Mr. We, Chairman. Yes, Mr. Decker. Uh, the motion, I'm in favor of the motion, but I want to establish it is that we're going to 
approve the permit subject to conditions to be established in the next few minutes. Correct. Correct. Okay. So does everybody understand we're gonna we're gonna uh, vote on this, and we're gonna order, put order of conditions. Is that right? Order of conditions or conditions on this? Yeah. On this permit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're taking we're taking a vote on this one. I'm gonna read it again. On Dale Whitney, special permit to change of use 250 Greenfield Road for a multi-dealer antique and collectible store. Vote. Bob Decker, can you please show yourself for the vote? Why do you want to see? Because I need it for the record. That's what Adam Costa said. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, if I telephone, um, Adam. Yes. I vote yes. John. Yes. Uh, Robert. Yes. And David. Yes. Permit is granted. Uh, five to zero vote. Okay, now we're going to go to conditions. Can Correct. I, yes. Can Discussion? I make a motion? Yes, John. I would move that we first, our first conditions be our normal and usual conditions that we have with all of our permits. And then we'll, and then, then I, then I would ask that we turn to the special ones that are particular to this permit. Okay. Any that's other, com any other comments? That's a motion. No, well, I'm sorry. That's a motion. I'm sorry. Do I have a second? Adam, I'll second it. Oh, okay. Second. Um, so I believe we have to take a vote on this again. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. Adam, Mr. Show yourself. Mr. Chair. John, uh, Mr. Chair, can I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, John, I mean, David, go ahead if you had a question. Uh, yeah, can, can the motion be restated? Can we hear it again? Yes, I move that, uh, that the first conditions be the town of Deerfield's nor usual and normal conditions for all special permits. We have about six or seven of them that that uh, uh, when we draft up special permits, there, yeah, you, we saw we saw in the, in the Dollar General permit, it's those normal and usual conditions. Um, I see, okay. And then, and, then, and, then, and then we can talk about the specific- The criteria. Yeah. John, John the criteria that are in the, in the bylaw? <laughs> No, it's just compliance yeah. with state laws. There's just a bunch of boilerplate okay. that are standard for all special permits that we should vote on to make sure they're part of this permit. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're voting on, uh, we had a second. That was Adam, correct? Yes. Okay. So we're voting for the special, for the special conditions. Adam, yes? Yes. I vote yes. John? Yes. Robert? Yes. And David? Yes. Okay. Now we're going to go to um, any other conditions we want to put on this. Comments, questions? So maybe, uh, may I? Mr. Chair? Yes, John, go ahead. John, John Staberski. So the, the, the first one we'll have is with the part with the septic system. So, uh, so if uh, parking spaces are reduced below what is required under Deerfield's bylaws that Ms. Whitney has to come back to see us and talk about parking. That is, con that is contingent upon the parking being the uh, minimum that is required under our zoning and planning bylaws. Okay, any comments? You know, maybe you should get lucky, John. They can put the um, leech field under the parking, under the under the blacktop. Uh, Adam, I'll second John's condition. Okay. Do we need to go the uh, accept these uh, vote in a vote situation? We do, correct? Yes. yes okay. Yeah, okay, so we're going to take a vote on this. Um, Uh, 
Um, we're voting on John's motion for or conditions. Adam? Yes. Um, I vote yes. John, you vote yes. Correct. You're going to vote yes, right, John? Because I have to hear it from yes. you. <laughs> um, Robert Decker? Yes. And David? David Potter, yes. Yes. Okay, we're running out of space. Okay. Any other conditions that we want to look at? Adam? <laughs> yeah, Adam? A condition that um, this permit is granted for the sale of antiques as presented and is not a blanket retail establishment of over 4,000 square feet. Could you second also that, David Potter. <laughs> okay, comments, Mr. Decker? Uh, I would like to make sure that the uh, kitchen doesn't get reestablished as a commercial kitchen. Okay, well, we got, we're, we've got we got a motion here with Adam, so we're going to vote on Adam's first, but we'll go to that second. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay, this is for the retail. Of antiques um, only, right? Can I ask a question? Isn't antiques retail? Well, Miss Gannett, it is, but I want to make it specific to this application and this use because if Miss Whitney decides that she doesn't like to do antiques anymore and wants to sell the property to another person that's just going to be general retail, I don't want a blanket permit there. Yeah, I just think that the wording when you say retail, because it's it's it just needs to be. A little bit more. Yeah, Thank you. Adam, could I suggest Sorry. words for you? Well, I, I suggested it. My motion was as presented. That that the the permit is granted for the use of business as presented, antiques as presented by the applicant. So if it's something different than what was presented here, then the permit's done. So that would require her any anybody else if that building is sold or whatever to do something different, you know, they have to come back to us. I just don't feel comfortable granting a blanket over 4,000 square foot retail facility permit there for any type of retail. Okay, do I have a second for this? David Potter, I second it. He seconds it, okay. Now we're gonna go to discussion. Discussion, John, I think you had your hand up. Yeah, so uh, Adam, I think uh, your uh, condition is more restrictive than it needs to be. Uh, you said as presented, but it should be, I mean, because I have I have gone to the shop up in uh, Greenfield, so it's antiques and collectibles. There are some, uh, there are many items there that might not fit into the antique label, but are collectibles like baseball cards and sports action figures, that kind of stuff. I mean, that's the thing she's going to sell. Um, okay. So I think, so, so I think I just. I'll I, withdraw and restate. Okay. So motion to withdraw, correct? Yeah, I'll withdraw. He's withdrawing. Okay. So do we have a new motion? Uh, Mr. Withdraw? Potter will withdraw his second. <laughs> I withdraw my second. Okay. And, and I will restate a motion for a condition on the application for Miss Whitney's, as presented, to sell antiques and collectibles at 250 Greenfield Road. Okay, do I have David a second? Potter. David Potter, I second. David has a second. Okay, so we're voting on this uh, motion from Mr. Sokolowski. Um, I assume it's Mr. Po uh, Mr. Sokolowski? Yes. Yes. I vote yes. John. Yes. Robert Decker. Yes. And Mr. Potter. Yes. Okay. Motion carries five to zero. Uh, anyone else have some special, con uh, I should say, conditions here? Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Decker. I would like to restrict uh, that there be no commercial kitchen at all in that building. I don't want it turning into a restaurant again. David Potter, I second. Okay, so we have a motion, we have a second. Uh, open to discussion. Comments?
Okay, um, we're going to vote on this one. Vote to restrict um, no commercial kitchen, to reopen a kitchen. Uh, Adam. Yes. I vote yes. John. Yes. Robert. Yes. And David. Yes. Motion carries five to zero on that condition. Anybody else? Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Yeah, uh, I'll try to answer it. Uh, for, for the group, uh, David Potter, uh, are we concerned about um, the aesthetics of a raised system, you know, in the worst case scenario? Do we want to discuss um, obscuring it in some way? I don't, you know, uh, I think maybe we, we brought up some similar concerns that were addressed in the Jolly General construction. Um, so I just throw that out there. It's not a motion. I'm just point of discussion. Adam. Yes, Adam. I think it's a good idea. I, it crossed my mind. I don't, there's just from that parking lot, I took some time and sat in it um, the other day and there's some neighbors and it would be more for five and 10. And if it was raised, it'd probably be grass. And I was thinking about maybe some vegetation or fencing and, I was back and forth in my mind. I just, I mean, just because the railroad tracks are so high, I was thinking of houses on North Hillside and then, you know, you wouldn't be able to see over the railroad tracks to see it. And, you know, to e even what side of the property it was on. And then I was thinking that there's a big race septic system over at the um, Hillside Pizza location to the back and it's not terribly unsightly because it's got kind of tall grass on it, but I wouldn't be opposed to a condition encouraging the uh, applicant if it had to be a raised system to, especially if it was like in the middle of the parking lot to either fence it or do it with um, like a natural type, you know, bushes or, or something like yeah. that. Other come. Oh, all right. Do we have a motion for that? I'll make a motion. Make, make a motion. Okay. So we're, go ahead, John. I move that if a raised septic system is visible to the public, that it be landscaped to minimize um, its, appear its appearance. I'll second that. Okay, so we have a second. Uh, discussion? Any discussion? Okay. Um, David Potter, yes. Uh, if I could just quibble with the wording, uh, you know, I'm not sure what minimize the appearance means. I, I guess I get the spirit of it, but um, John, is, is am I asking too much to maybe? Well, I, I was trying to be general, but specific yeah. at the same time. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, you, you, it's kind of, you're talking such a hypothetical. It's hard to, it's hard to kind of capture that um, yeah. because you don't know what it's going to look like and where it's going to be. I mean, I think we could we have to rely on some good faith here. Yeah. A, 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 a dressed up raised septic system is a heck of a lot better than a decaying building. Yeah. How oh. about how about I like I like your word landscaped. How about adding something like beautification? You know, I don't, like uh, again a general accept, concept, right? It's not like it's. I will accept that as a as a friendly amendment. <laughs> and Jennifer, I can see your hands up. There. Okay, Jennifer. <clears throat> um. I would make a suggestion that you would put that any landscaping plan, fencing, if there is a raid system comes back before the board. So you take a look at it, you're not guessing, you're not saying, because beautification or whatever can yeah. mean different things to different people. So I think that if you put a condition, if you have a raised system, you bring that to the board for review. You're, you're a wise woman, Jennifer. I so like that. I know I have. Are we, is this someone, are we going to withdraw that? I'll withdraw it and say that if there is, if there is a ray system that's visible by the public, she has to come before the board with a plan to minimize its, its, uh, its appearance. Point of order. Question. Oh, hold it, hold it. David Potter, I second the motion. Or oh, hang on a second. Okay. Um, do we have a comment? Was it Mr. Decker? Were you next? 
Yes, I was. Okay, Mr. Decker. The thing is, um, it's just going to be a modification of the existing permit. It's not going to be a new permit. Right. So, and the board can handle it at a routine meeting and not necessarily have to take it to a formal public hearing. Am I understanding you correctly, John? That is correct. Okay, so it just comes in and gets informally taken care of if everything is fine. Okay, I'm sorry. We should have had a sec. Um, I we inter I interrupted. David, you you I have a second. second. Yeah, you have a Thank second. You. Okay, yes. so uh, uh, the motion before us is to um, have Miss Whitney come back to us if the raised septic system is put in there, and um, we're going to review what the thing looks like whether we put fences or whatever, the board decides that it wants to do. A screening okay. or planting plan. Right, okay. Um, it'll be dealt with in a regular meeting, not with a special. Yeah, just the modification of the permit. Okay. It would only um, take a majority vote, it wouldn't have to take, have a four-fifths vote. Okay. You have to give me more paper, you know, yet, Jen. Sorry. <laughs> right on your hand yeah right okay we're voting on the the conditions for the septic if, if there is a raised septic system adam sokolowski yes uh chair votes yes john yes robert yes david yes okay any other conditions I have one for discussion. What about outside uh, displays? Since we, is that, John, was that covered in one of our other conditions on Dollar General? There, there was a condition on Dollar General, but um, but that was particular for them. Uh, you know, I don't see a real need for, in this business, for outdoor displays. It's not, that's not the nature of their business. I mean, we see, we have antique stores up and down uh, five and 10 and Occasionally, you might see a sleigh outside or something like that, and that's kind of quaint looking. Um, I, 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 I don't know if, it, given what I've seen from these kind of businesses, I don't think we need to restrict it. You mean like the hay rake out in front of your house, John? It's my grandfather's hay rake. <laughs> oh, go smart man. Okay, uh, discussion on this. Uh, Adam, I thought uh, Miss Whitney, when she presented the first time, said there might be a few pop-up tents outside on occasion, but everything was going to go back inside during the overnight. Is that correct? That's Dale Whitney. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, there may be. Uh, may I? Yeah, go ahead, Dale. Right. She already uh, did this, so I think it's okay. It's not new information. We already talked about this. I mean, if you guys remember. Yes. I just want to. I just wanted to ask a question. Um, like down the road at the other antique shop, um, but during the day when people are there, they have some things outside their door. Is that what you're talking about? Or are you talking about like permanently? Well, a little bit of both uh, condition it either way. I don't think that's the will of the board. I'm speaking for myself, not everybody, but that Mr. St uh, Mr. Stabersky brought it up and then, you know, we could put a condition on it. And I don't, like I said, I, I don't, foresee it being a problem in this particular case based on what I remember Miss Whitney talking about on the first time she presented to us but if someone wants to make a motion to condition it then I'm fine with moving forward and I, I really don't know how uh, you and Mr. Decker have made it this far without a break because I'm over here with my legs crossed <laughs> oh, you're, okay um, so I don't there's no motion I was just a point of discussion there's no motion here Correct. Yep. Okay. So that's up. all right. So um, we've got four conditions that we'll write up. Correct. Yep. Yes, Jen. Smile. I would like to make um, an additional condition that says that, um, and then this this will lead to our discussion later. Uh, is that a management plan? If there's a change of ownership of the business that they bring their management plan to the board for review. So it doesn't have to go back for um, a new special permit or anything, but then we would, we as the board and the town would know that the hours of operations and certain 
details that have been in this permit uh, stay with the next person. So it's just a condition for the future. You're talking 15, 20 years, it's still an antique store, changes ownership and somebody else takes over that the board has it in the special permit that it just has a condition that they need to know um, uh, sort of the operations of the, of the business. Adam, Bernie, I have something on that. Yes. Adam. I thought that that became one of those boilerplate conditions like Mr. Staberski asked for. So that was, I thought that that was going to be our standard operating procedure moving forward. Okay. With that. Yep. All right. That, that's, that's a very point. That's, that's, that's our standard, uh, one of our standard conditions. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay. So are we finished with um, uh, conditions? Yes. All right. Yeah. Do I have any other suggestions for a bathroom break? Is that what we're looking for right now? No, let's finish up. I, okay. I, I move. I move. We uh, we we end uh, our uh, our period of deliberation and and close the deliberation and and uh, let Ms. Whitney go to the bathroom and we can do what we need to do. Okay. Uh, we have a motion to close this deliberation. Um, do I have a second? Mr. Second. Potter, second, right? David Potter, second. Second, okay. Vote. Um, Adam. Yes. I vote yes. John. Yes. Robert. Yes. And David. David Potter, yes. Okay, so we're all set now. We're, um, thank you, Ms. Whitney, for your patience. And Thank you, every one of you, for everything that you've done. I really appreciate it. Good Thank luck you. in your business. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. And if you do have something you need to talk to me about, don't be afraid to talk to me. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, so you want to take a quick bathroom break, or will you want to continue what we're doing and end the meeting? Well, I don't think we have much more on the agenda, do we? Uh, we have one thing I want to discuss. But you're done with me. No, we're you're done. done. With you. You're I'm done. done. Good night. Good night. Good night. Uh, bye, Jen. Bye. Bernie, how long do you think it can, it can it go? Can, and, and how about, squeeze your legs a little harder. Oh, I'm trying. Uh, yeah, go uh, ahead. All right. It's going to be about two, two minutes, if it's that much. Um, I was thinking about this special permit process that we have. And I would like to, when a person comes in and applies for a special permit, that we give them a copy of... 53, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. Not that we're going to fill it out, but they get this ahead of time so that when they come to us, they have a preview of the questions that they're going to be asked. Um, David I think, Potter, I second it. You let me finish, David. <laughs> I'm, trying I'm, to sorry. Say, I'm trying to be a used car salesman. Um, I think it would, would help people and I, I think our purpose is to help people in town. And I know my wife looked at this and said, well, if I came in here, I wouldn't know what to do. So if we give them this to look at, I think it gives them a little bit of a heads up so that when they come to us, they feel a little more comfortable. And I felt sorry for, for, um, for Dale coming in here because whatever. So, okay, comment, Jen. Jen. Yeah, so um, I think that the board needs to look at their application closer, the special permit application for the zoning board and have certain requirements. The planning board is um, looking at adding something that in, into the bylaw that says that they need to come um, to Bob and or another town official before they go before the board. So we know that we have a complete application and there's basic standards. So the ZBA application, much to my dismay, does not require um, stamped site plans, which I was absolutely positively shocked by, um, by engineers or architects. Um, it does, it's not a requirement. And I believe that it, it should be, but it's up to the board. Um, and you can also ask for a waiver for certain things. So I have some examples from um, my previous town I worked in that I think are is sort of good criteria okay. to stay. Hey, hang on a second. Let's stay with the topic I've got right now. I know this is an important one. We're gonna see this in our next meeting. On a consensus, do people agree with what I've said? 
Yes. Yeah, you agree. David, you agree. John? Yeah. You know, I, I hear more from Jennifer, and although I think our process, you know, uh, Dale really had some, didn't really, wasn't prepared because you didn't know what to expect. Uh, I think rather than just append that, that we reevaluate the application, maybe that is a condition, but I would actually, and I know Jennifer, I'm sure you have had some good examples, but to ask our council to, uh, to look at our application and look at what we ask people to do and to see what other towns are doing and what is the best, best, uh, best kind of solution out in Massachusetts at this time. Mr. Chair, this is Jennifer Remillard. Um, yeah. While I know that I cannot vote on this topic, um, I would just like to just weigh in and say that I think it's um, really important to move forward with uh, what Jennifer Gannett and with Mr. Stabirsky suggested because um, in most other communities, there's a, a thorough list, a checklist, and incorporating the, you know, the items that you've listed off earlier, I think is really um, important for when people come in front of the ZBA and that they're prepared and that we have all the relevant information. Um, and as Mr. Sokolowski mentioned, while right now there isn't a mandated traffic, um, you know, study required, um, you could also incorporate that they do some kind of a traffic count so you get um, that information and then they could also go to the DOT's website and get accident or traffic information to submit with their application, not just, you know, speak with Chief Pachorek or um, Mr. Sokolowski, you know, at the, at the police department. So you'll have a tangible um, item to look at when you're going through everything. John? Yeah, I agree. No. Okay. I've been trying to do this for a long time to get this changed, members. Since I've been a, since I've been the chairman, I've been trying to get this stuff changed, and it's it's it, it's a slow process. This is a step in the right direction. It's not the final solution, but this is something that we can vote on. That they get these um, these six criteria, and we work from there. But we got to we've got to move in the direction. Otherwise, we're going to be stuck with um, you know with with democracies forming committees and get stuck. And can I, I show think, you something? I don't mean to interrupt. Yeah. Can I show you something? Quick, just, I don't know. It's the Amherst bylaw has their conditions that you were talking about, special permit findings. Like it's all listed. That's part of their application. So every application that they get, it's right there for them to see what they need to include. So I think that, that it's, I agree with you, Bernie. I think it's very important for, for anybody coming with a special permit to know. And I, you know, I would, I would say if you want to vote on that right now and say that then we would work on, uh, you know, refining the application with council, um, that would be great. I'm all for that. You know, I said a two minute discussion now what we've run into, but all I'm saying is let's vote on these six items that when they come in, they hand them this and then let's, make a, a, a some kind of directive that we're going to start working to to, to facilitate this for people it, it's a it's a cumbersome situation yeah and i think I, we're saying the same thing yeah uh, and oh, you know ernie i got something here quickly yeah. <clears throat> i would say and i don't if we make a motion that the application no matter what they're applying for they're coming before us then they get a copy of the town bylaws or it's part of the application so that they have it. No matter what it is they're coming for, they get a copy of the bylaws and it says on the application somewhere, whether they consult with Adam Costa or whatever they want to do administratively, like John said. So the application is complete. So it's like more of an instruction pamphlet than an application. And, and we need to do some with variances as well. I mean, you know, we, we don't just do special permits. So, right. you know, I, I would think, uh, Bernie, uh, appended to the, uh, the to the application, we should just have the relevant portion of our town bylaws that apply to it. So the special permit has a special permit. The variance has a variance. Um, you know, at least as a start, I think that's just a Band-Aid, though. 
I agree. I'm, I'm not. I just try to keep it simple because I know what this gets. It gets cumbersome, but um, I agree. It, it's we're not user friendly, and we. I think we need to be. That's my personal opinion being on this board. But I see people come in here and they're just they don't know what to do. And I some as I've learned, this is confusing. I mean, John, you're a lawyer, so you understand a lot. Of this, but a lot of us are just we're just lay people, and, and it gets confusing. And I don't want people to come in here. And what bothers me is, I'm going to come right out in front and say it, is if we make it too cumbersome, people aren't going to come to us. So they're going to, they're going to do things that aren't legal. We need to be friendly to people and help people to get through this stuff the best we can and follow our, not that we let stuff go, but to follow our bylaws so that they come to us and say, listen, the ZBA is willing to, to help us out. Otherwise, we have people breaking the law. And that's, I don't think that's our purpose. And if we, but if we become too complicated, we turn people off to it. And consequently, we have people not following our zoning laws. Bernie, the Mr. real risk is that if it's too complicated, businesses are not going to want to come to Deerfield. Mr. I'm Chairman. I said that, John, because I, you know, I probably said too much already, but that's how I Mr. feel. Okay. Mr. Chairman, David yes, Potter. Sir. Mr. Potter. Thank you. Um, so I'm wondering, Bernie, is your motion going to cause us to do something or somebody to do something or is it a motion to express support for something that somebody else is going to have to take care of and i'm not clear on on the process what you know because if we're talking about telling someone that they have to include these bylaws or these criteria in the application for the special permit that's that's one thing then then do we have that power to to compel somebody else to do that or is that something that we're going to do because if you know uh, that that's part a to my question part b is why wouldn't we attach the idea to further the process improve it with council's input so include your idea but also add on the the notion that we ought to make it as good as it can be and i'm sure council or you know a process would help that no matter you know if it's done in our committee or if the town um you know uh, does it separate from us? So I'm not okay. clear where what, what you're saying here. This is this is what I was asking. Right now, we can vote and say, okay, this is a special permit 5320. When they come in for a special permit, that on their application, they get these six criteria as a starting point, not a finishing point, but a starting point that they get this. Because if we, we wait, you know, we might have three or four of these and we're right back to people not knowing. So if we take a, we, we say, and it's not going to be that hard, we can tell Sue that when they come in for the application, that she's going to give them this paper. Simple. And then we need to work on, we need to work on what you said, John. I agree with you. We need to, we need to look at this, but that's going to take time. Look, Amherst is a good one to look at, but I'm not going to comp copy someone else's. We need to look at specifically for our town that meets our needs. So I think we could do that, but I just brought this forward. And if we're not in favor of it, that's fine. If you're in favor, of it, that's fine too. But I, I thought, got it. Okay. Confusion. It yep. was gonna, we're going to just say, okay. Let me make a motion on this. Is, yeah. is, is, because I don't think we should just do it for a special permit. I think we need to do it for the variance as well. That 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 when uh, an application, I move that when an application uh, for uh, for for the, the ZBA is given to uh, an interested per party that the portion of the Deerfield bylaws that pertain to it be given to the applicant as well. Okay, do I have a second? David Potter, second. Second, okay, discussion. I'm they're gonna sorry, love us. I, I, I have they're to just- gonna love us in the office, go ahead. I'm just gonna say one more thing. It's that I want a pre-submittal meeting. At the pre-submittal meeting, we go over with the applicant exactly what sections of the bylaw are making them have a special permit. That's exactly what you're saying. So they leave and they know exactly what they need to show before the board. It's called a pre-submittal meeting. Jennifer, I agree with you, but I think we just need to review our, revise our whole process. That's part of it. I mean, I, I wanna see our, I mean, it. we really, we're, we're operating in the dark ages a little bit with how we do things here. Yeah, so, and, I think and that I, I, agree, I agree that's part of it, but I think it's just too much to deliberate over and 
handle at this late date and just a I, think this is I guess yeah. the question I have is, should we should we vote on this motion? And I agree, or vote on this motion and then adjourn for tonight. We're keeping it in the back of our mind is exactly do we have Put the authority to require a pre-submittal meeting. That's why board. we need counsel. Right. And I'm all for the pre-submittal meeting. I would love. We don't need counsel for that. Well, no, again, do we have the authority to require a pre-submittal meeting? Yes. We just had that put into the bylaw for the planning board. Yes, it's part of an application, but definitely we'll pay a couple hundred dollars to Adam and talk to him about it. But we can say we want to have people come in and talk to Bob and talk to other town officials and sit around a table and make sure that they know exactly what they need to go before the board and present to the all of you so that you have a complete application. Bob? Yeah, I thought when Lisa was on in the planning board that that had to be voted into a bylaw. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That needs to be in a bylaw, not just a policy. Right. That's why we need opinion of council. I mean, that's no, why. I, I'm pretty sure that's what she said for, because the planning board, they're gonna try to vote that in as a bylaw, but that's specific to the planning board. I don't see why it couldn't be specific to both boards. But that's why we need council. Well, right now, in you know, maybe speaking out of turn, but when they and this is the other problem I have with a, a lot of these bylaws, they make them too specific in town where they should make the bylaw that says at the discretion of the building inspector and the town administrator or whatever, they may require a pre submittal meeting for any board and just leave it at that, and then that way if it's the discretion of the board or the chairman of the board or have some language in there. So they, so if some projects you actually have a, have a meeting, other problems, you might be able to look at it, say everything's in order. We don't need to have people come in or zoom in. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Decker. The big thing is if you're going to have a pre submittal meeting, et cetera, You've got to make sure you don't have a quorum of the board there where it's you're no going. No board. It's either, oh, I think no it would be, it's the chairman could require it, but it's no board members. It's with town hall staff. Okay. That, that is fine because I don't want to have it, have somebody come in and say, I went to the pre submittal meeting. They didn't have any problem with it. Then it gets to us. And then we have a major problem because they think they already got approval. So, Mr. Chair. Yes. Go ahead, Bob. Oh, well, I just wanted to, Jen, I just wanted to talk to Jen for a second. If Can you unmute for a second? I can, I can hear you. You just can't hear me when I'm yeah. muted. Yeah, but I'm just saying, I think that they're going to try to vote at the town meeting to have the pre-submittal meeting for the planning board. Couldn't the zoning board or, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying not to be involved too much, but couldn't that just simply say pre-submittal meeting for the zoning board and the planning board and then vote on it at town meeting? Um, I'd but, have to talk to the council about that because it's already been advertised. It's tomorrow morning, it's being advertised. For, all right, sorry. You know, so I don't think so. At yeah, this but you could probably make a motion to amend on town meeting floor. But I think that even if you just, you, you don't have to make it mandatory, but if the board says that they want people to come in and and meet with town staff prior to you know going you know they don't have to do it but it's it's under good advisement that they do so that they have a complete application because it saves all of you all of us time they come in i say i'm going to need so many plans with the you know the sign plan that shows like dale whitney had no idea when i talked to her and i said no, we need to know that your sign is going to say the same size as the existing sign. Otherwise, you need to go for a special part. You know, it's like there's all these different little criteria that, that, you know, regular people just don't know about. And I think it's important that they do that. I mean, I don't, I just think that if the, and that's sort of like what Bernie was saying about giving them those criteria. It's, it's the same thing. It's, it's good for you to think about coming and speaking to the town prior to submitting your special permit application and stamping it in and starting the clock and risking the fact that your application is going to be denied. And you can ask for waivers for things, but. Move Mr. the question. Chair. 
Move the question. Mr. Mr. Decker. Move I the second, question. I second his motion. All right, we're going to vote, Bernie. All right, what are we voting on? Whatever, Whatever the motion, motion was. The yeah, motion on the floor was that when the application is given out for anything from the Zoning Board of Appeals, that the relevant section of the town bylaw also be given to the interested person. Okay. Okay. I just said the six, but that's better. That's even better. That, that's great. Okay. So we got a motion. We have a second. So we're voting now to send, give each applicant relative information when they come to apply for their permits. Correct? Correct. Yes. Correct. Okay. Okay. Adam. Yes. Um, I vote yes. Um, John. Yes. Uh, Robert. Yes. And David. Yes. Okay. Okay. Motion passed five to zero. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, I got an email earlier in the week, or a few days ago, anyway. Wanting to know whether or not we're going to be willing to meet on the 29th of April. Um, do you know the status of that is, at this point? Because uh, that's a special meeting, and I know some people have different things going on. I don't personally have anything that night, but I'm just saying that uh, are we going to meet that night? We're scheduled to meet uh, two weeks after that, I think. Okay, that yeah, is I, for Dollar Tree. Jen, am I correct? No? Not Dollar Tree. No, it's I mean, a Dollar Tree. tree house. Treehouse. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm not what a liquor time on the 29th, okay. Bernie. What? What time on the 29th? Um, let's, open, time? let's open the discussion. We want to do it at six. You want to do it at seven? So I am, uh, I have to recuse myself. Their engineer is an engineer currently working for me. So I have a conflict. So, uh, okay. So don't have, I know you guys meet at six to work around my schedule a little bit. Okay. Uh, and, I need to go do something. So I'm not going to be part of this discussion. So I'll kind of sign off at this point. Okay. 29th um, at six is fine with me. Six. Fine with me, David Potter. Decker. It's fine with me. I just wanted to make sure that while we were meeting tonight that we decide what we wanted to do. Okay. And uh, Alex and Jennifer, are you going to be available? I emailed Sue. I am available on the 29th and six o'clock works for me. Okay, Alex. I suppose I'll be there. Thanks. Okay. Uh, any Janet, other comments? Is that good with you? Yeah. Yeah. Ms. Um, Ms. Janet, is that good with you? Yeah, I'm, I set it up. So. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> no, I need to get home to watch the UMass hockey game. So we're not going to go any further than that. All right. Motion to adjourn. Um, second. Do, do I have a second? Good. Thank Mr. you, gentlemen. Oh, okay. Um, Motion to adjourn. Adam. Yes. Oh, yes. I vote yes. John. John's gone already. He left. Okay. Robert. Yes. David. Yes. Alex and Jennifer, we're going to ask you because he's gone. Yes. Yes. Okay. Sure. Thank yes. you, gentlemen, for all your. Good night, patience. everyone. Good Thanks. night, everybody. Bye.